So this uh, uh, morning, I would like to speak about a particular uh, a title that is uh, Our Mouth, an Awesome Gift of God. Our Mouth, an Awesome Gift of God. I believe that you all are listening into the Word of God. When I am speaking, I would like to encourage everyone to open your Bible and read that portion so that it is it will be very easy for you to understand what does it mean okay so when we uh, got to that title you know it's it's our mouth and awesome uh, gift of god and i'm taking from psalm number 141 verse 3 psalm number 141 verse 3 you know i was I was, uh, you know, uh, uh, wishing to speak something uh, in this uh, uh, month of January about maybe a blessing sermon or uh, what is that? Uh, you know, blessing sermon or a prosperity sermon or something like that. But uh, the Lord is not leading me into that verses or that uh, titles. But uh, the Spirit of the Lord has given me this particular title and this particular verse in my mind and i am just submitting myself in the hands of god to speak that word and i believe that god will speak to every one of our church do you believe that do you believe that amen god knows everyone and god can speak to every person amen so i am standing here but i know that god has a special purpose about this verse, if this verse is written in the Bible, there is no doubt at all, God can speak to us. Amen. So we are looking into that verse and we will be maybe uh, uh, referring some other verses from the New Testament, especially also from the book of Proverbs and something. And uh, one verse from Ecclesiastes also. Because I, mean, I don't know I will be able to uh, complete this uh, title or this sermon uh, with this Sunday. Uh, if not, I'll be uh, continuing the same sermon. That means the, the balance, the, the remaining portion also will be preached in the next uh, uh, Sunday or in the upcoming Sundays. Okay, listen. So, the, we will read that verse once. Yeah. Psalm number 141, uh, verse 3. Amen. So it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful verse that we are listening from this uh, uh, a point that you know. Um, let me let me let me begin my sermon of this morning with a with a question with a question. The question is, um, what was the first word? What was the first word, or what was the first sentence that Adam made in his life? What was the first word or first sentence that Adam spoke and Eve spoke? With that question and answer, we will move on. What was that? Uh, the, <laughs> just before that, there is something. Just to wake you up. Okay? I know that uh, some, most of you are just I mean, simply sitting there and, you know, okay, anyway, pastor is preaching, uh, let, uh, we, we need to hear, listen to that, that's it, no? So you're just simply sitting there, just I mean, to wake you up, I'm asking that question, what is the, oh, you're looking into the Bible? Without looking into the Bible, you have to say that, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, I'll read that verse maybe from the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. Yeah. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. You're right. Joseph, you're right, and uh, Jesus, you're also right. Okay, verse 23. That is, the man said, This is now born of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. Okay, okay. So he was speaking about his wife. Amen. And this is the verse. And about his wife. And what about a what about Eve, the woman? To whom 
woman spoke the first word or first sentence the serpent what was that mm -hmm. yeah it is there in uh, chapter 3 genesis chapter 3 verse 2 the woman said to the serpent this is the first sentence from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden god has said you shall not eat from it or touch it or you will die okay what i'm going to spell you uh, speak to you is you know god has given as the mouth right god has given as the tongue and god has given the ability to speak Okay? We have the ability to speak and we have the ability to communicate with the people and God has given that organs and God has given us the parts of our body to glorify the name of the Lord. To glorify the name of the Lord. So that's the reason, you know, Psalmist in this particular Psalm 141 verse uh, uh, 3, he is making a particular prayer in the presence of God and he says that I need something to close my mouth. What a, what a, what a different prayer it is. You know, he is saying that I need a God before my mouth, the oh Lord. I need something to guard my mouth and I don't want to speak everything which comes in my mind but I need a door there. I need a door there so that I will not speak all the words which comes in my mind and I will keep myself safe. I will keep myself properly so that I will be a blessing for other people and that will be a blessing for the name of the Lord. Amen. So that's the reason that uh, I mean, he is praying in that way. You know, as we move on uh, 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 this message, this sermon, uh, we may be using some other words also in order to understand the, uh, the, the clear meaning of these words. Maybe we'll be using the words instead of mouth, speech instead of uh, a mouth, lips uh, instead of uh, our I mean, mouth, or uh, the tongue instead of our mouth. Because you know, when you, when you study the Bible, we understand there are many things written about, mentioned about the organs of a person or parts of the body of a person in Bible, in different places, in different places. Even when you look into Genesis, from Genesis through, I mean, Revelation, we understand there are many organs mentioned in Bible. There are many parts of a body mentioned in Bible. And also about the mouth, only 300 uh, times it is mentioned in Bible about the mouth. Okay, so remember how much important is our mouth? How much important is our lips? Or how much important is our tongue? Okay, so that we, we are coming to that point. You know, we know that God has made every person perfectly with all the parts of that body, right? God has made every person perfectly with a perfection with all the organs, with all the parts of the body. Okay, we know that we have a head and we have two eyes, we have two ears and we have two hands and we have two legs. Man, but we have only one nose, we have only one mouth. You know, one day an intellectual person was asking a question to pastor and he was asking, Pastor, um, you believe that uh, uh, God has uh, made us with, uh, 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 with the two eyes, right? And pastor says, yes, we are made with the two eyes. We have two eyes. And he was asking the pastor, why God has given you two eyes? Why God has given, given us two eyes? Then this uh, pastor was not a scientific person or he was not knowing any, he was not having any knowledge about the scientific, uh, scientific uh, area and he was not knowing anything about the, the all those things but he was uh, just a pastor and he said, uh, yes brother I know that uh, God has given us two eyes uh, to, 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 to give, uh, to get the more clarification uh, about the things. Okay, you can you can see widely from all the angles, and I, I don't know the, the, what the medi, medi, medical field is. You know, the doctors and nurses are sitting here. Why we have two eyes? 
the wider angle right the wider angle no it is i think uh, the eyes has that three dimensions or something yeah so that's the reason maybe that god has given you okay you can you can see see the things in a wider angle okay so that that might be the reason anyway the pastor said okay oh, oh god has given me uh, uh, the two eyes only because some I mean, we will get more clarification when we see something okay more clarification more then he was asking why god has given you two years two years okay and the pastor said okay it might be because uh, i mean uh, whenever we listen to something and we need more we need more clarification okay so when we when we hear with two years the things will be more clarified more clarified okay and the man the intellectual man asked to this pastor uh, why we are given two legs and two hands okay then pastor said brother that may be the reason because you know we are supposed to do more things for the lord we are supposed to do more things with our hands and with our two legs and that's the reason that god has given us these two legs and two hands then the this next question is interesting then that man was asking to the pastor pastor why god fixed one and two eyes in front of your face and why he did not god did not fix one eye at the back of your head and one one eye at your friend then pastor was confused you know so that also can happen you know if god and he was asking okay if uh, god could have uh, made that one fix that uh, one eye back said also you don't want to turn like this to see th see what is <laughs> happening at the, at the back and uh, this pastor was troubled and he was uh, he was thinking oh why he, this is not happening why this is the problem then he was thinking and thinking and thinking he was not having any answer for that this man was saying okay there is no reverse gear for the man no there is no reverse gear for for our for our car there is a, there is a reverse gear no if you want to go back you can put that reverse gear then pastor if god would have given you the one eye at the back side also you don't want to turn there and you can just look look at from that eye also then uh, the pastor said brother i have an answer i don't know the clear answer about that but i know one thing that god is a all knowing god and almighty god he knows everything and there will be some purpose that god has fixed uh, i mean two eyes in front and he was not satisfied and and he was asking another question then why god did not give you two mouth why god did not give you two mouth oh if he would have two two mouths and he was saying oh we would have uh, eaten many food many different items of food if he would have you know think about when I mean, you are you are you are having two mouth okay what all the things that we can do right rendu vaay undara namukku endella karyangal okke cheyarunnu endella karyangal kalikkarunnu okay orna pastor marubadi endha parnjan nariyo eda potta nee tinna mathra alla ninde vaaye ninakku daivam thannirikkunnathu okay it is not the you the one mouth is give, given not only to eat something amen not only eat something to, to to speak something which will bring glory to the name of the lord amen so this is the right thing that we have to think about god has given us the organs and god has given us the parts of our body with a purpose with a purpose and we have to think about that I mean every behind every organ behind every uh, a part of a body god has a special purpose about that i mean so knowing that is the best thing in a life and i mean using that purpose using that organ using that part of a body for a good purpose is a wonderful thing to understand I mean so uh, I was just thinking you know I mean God has blessed us with uh, the 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 what is that the internal organs are there and external organs are there okay in bible there are many times I've been mean, mentioning about many of the organs and the parts of the body but I was just thinking oh lord why this man is speaking here this the psalmist david is saying oh lord i need something to guard my mouth I mean God has given us to speak something 
right? God has given this organ, uh, given us the mouth or the lip or the tongue to speak something. But I mean, the psalmist is praying, no Lord, I don't want to speak in that way. I don't want to go in that way because I need a God. I need something to keep me from speaking the bad things. I need something to keep me away from, I mean, doing something which is out of the will of God. I mean, that's the reason that he is praying, oh Lord, I need a perfection. And Lord, I mean, whenever you are giving me the organs or the parts of the body, oh Lord, I am trusting in you and I need to be, I mean, properly living in this world, oh Lord. So, you know, we will be uh, going into that, I mean, portion maybe later again. You know, um, okay, we will read maybe uh, Psalm number 81. Okay, when, when you go to uh, Psalm number 81, you know, uh, David is praying one thing there, that open your mouth wide, I will fill it. Okay, what is, what is the prayer of David in 81? Open your, sorry, sorry, no, it's, it's not the prayer, but uh, I mean, God said to the people that you have to open your mouth widely, eh? I will fill it, right? Okay, you know why? And the end of We start at the Turaka Yana Dine Naraka. So when you open your mouth, I will fill it. But what, what uh, the David is praying here. When he is praying that, oh Lord, teach me to Lord how to close my mouth and I need a guard over my mouth and keep over the doors my lips. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, think about, you know, when God is giving a mouth or when God is giving an organ or when, when God is giving a part of a body in our life, when we are supposed to use that for the name of the Lord. Use that, I mean, for, uh, for a good purpose or for, with, a, with a good intention. You know, most of the time what is happening among the believers, when we are not thinking about I mean, why God has given me this part and why God has given me this organ. You know, because of that only, we are not knowing the advantages or disadvantages of the organ. You know, there are many disadvantages, there are many advantages, there are many, I mean, bad, I mean, uh, useful, uh, use, uh, useful things in, with, the, with our organ. At the same time, we can use the same organ, same part of our body for a, for a bad purpose or a, for a, for a, for a, with a, with a, with a different intention. Okay, so that is what we are going to, I mean, see today. That, you know, uh, may, most of the time, when uh, sometimes good things comes out of our mouth, and also, bad things also comes out of our, out of our I mean, our mouth. And we need the wisdom of God to identify what is right and what is wrong. Okay? So, we have to pray in the presence of God and praying that, oh Lord, I need the wisdom of God. I need the wisdom of God that uh, what I should speak or what I should not speak. Okay? So, keep your mouth and keep your tongue or keep your lips I mean, when you are sitting in the presence of God, we have to think about that and say that, Oh Lord, I am just here sitting in your presence and I need to know, I need to have the wisdom of God what to speak and what not to speak. I mean, when you go to uh, James, book of James, maybe epistle of James chapter 3, you know, let us, let us open that verse, maybe uh, James chapter 3 verse 6. We will read that verse, then we will move on. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, sister. So we have actually we have to read uh, uh, chapter three, verses one to uh, one to ten or something. But we have no time to time to read all those portions. But listen to that verse. You know, especially chapter three explains about the dangers of the tongue and the power and hypocrisy of the tongue. And also, James is encouraging us to control our words in a proper way. Otherwise, it may cause us to a great destruction. And also, again. In that particular verse, he says that our tongue is a deadly poison. And he is illustrating the tongue with the fire, with horse, and with ships. 
Okay, so listen very carefully in that particular verses we understand. You know, when we use our tongue or when we use our mouth, I mean, so we have to think that is it hurting somebody or I mean, when I'm speaking something, is it making a trouble for any person or if it is, is it hurting any person? So thinking that only we have to produce a word out of our mouth when when something is coming out of our, out, out out of our i mean uh, out of our mouth i mean the bible says that you can use your word or you can use your speech or you can use your tongue for a good purpose and also something bad also will be coming out of that okay that's what uh, we read in uh, james chapter 3 verse 10 okay 3 verse 10 let's read that verse also Okay, out of the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. This is possible. This is possible as a human being. It could happen. You know, the same mouth may speak some blessing words. At the same time, the same mouth will speak some cursing words. You know, sometimes I used to think about, you know, when we speak something, the Bible says that think, think twice and say one word. Okay, so when, when, when you know, uh, sometimes uh, we are not just thinking anything and we are not, uh, I mean, thinking what would be the con consequences or something, but just we are, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 saying something and uh, then after that, uh, the people are making some problem or that person is making problem only because that we were speaking that word without thinking. Okay, so that's the reason it says that same time from same mouth, the word of blessing may come, the word of Cursing also will come. But we have to choose. We have to choose what is coming out of my mouth. I am not talking about a preaching or a speech. Or what is that encouragement or the word of exhortation or something. But I am talking about whatever we speak. Whatever we speak. I mean, and how to use our mouth. And how to use our organs. Or how to use I mean, our I mean, a part, parts of our body for the glory of the Lord. I mean, remember, you know, big I mean, issues are happening in the world. Even in the churches only because of a word. When many a times, many a times in society and in church also, you know, only because of the word, I mean, something is, something differently happens or some issues are happening only because of a, of a, of a word of a person or of a sentence of a person, you know, there are many people complaining, okay, that person is speaking like that and I don't like that, okay, that person is somehow speaking in this way, I don't like that, okay, that word is not good, that word is not good, you know, why that is happening? Because we are not thinking about what we are speaking. We are not thinking about what, what is our speech. I mean, if our speech is correct, and if our, I mean, uh, our, I mean, words are correct, and uh, if our thoughts are correct, then that will be a fruitful thing for the people of God. I mean, so that's the reason it says that when the same time, the frame, same mouth, I mean, there is a coming, I mean, blessing is coming, and cursing also is coming. And let us think about how can we use our words for good purpose. Okay, so it's there. How can we use our words for good purpose? The first thing is, the first point is, our words can bring peace instead of war. Our words can bring peace instead of war. Especially in Proverbs chapter 15 verses 1 and 18. Let's read that verse maybe. Proverbs chapter 15 verses 1 and 18. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> Okay, what is that? You know, a soft a a answer turns away wrath. Okay, the soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And also in 18th verse, a hot tempered man stirs up strife. Strife in Malayalam, Kalaham. Okay, but a patient man calms the dispute. Okay, so you know, why these verses are written in Bible? Many a times, only because of the people, sometimes, I mean, they are hot-tempered. Or sometimes, the person is not, I mean, speaking a soft answer or giving a soft answer that turns away to the wrath. And also, the harsh word stirs up anger. Okay? And a hot-tempered person stirs up the strife or kalaham. 
നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിനകത്ത് ഐ മീൻ നമ്മൾ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കേണ്ട ഒരു കാര്യം നമ്മൾ പറയുന്ന വാക്കുകൾ നമ്മൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യുക മറ്റുള്ളവർക്ക് ഒരു അനുഗ്രഹമായി തീരാനായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് വേണം പറയാനായിട്ട് there there will be a blessing for other people you know whatever we speak whatever i mean we are talking or whatever we are communicating with a person you know let that word be a blessing for other people you know here we understand that sometimes our i mean words are bringing i mean bringing i mean a war or trouble in the heart of a person instead of the peace you know we are supposed to i mean speak to the people with a peaceful mind i mean we are supposed to peacefully makes the settlement or peacefully I mean, solve with the problems when we are speaking something okay, that's the reason that it is written many a times that uh, i mean we are supposed to be i mean softly talking to the people and when we are I mean, communicating to the people when we are i mean having that touch with the people i mean they will understand and this is the right character and this is the i mean good manner of that that jesus was showing to us and we also have to follow that manner when we are speaking to other people you know remember one thing sometimes we have knowledge and sometimes we have wealth or status or education or ego in that all things whatever it may be we have that will not work out sometimes you know when we speak to a person you know our knowledge or our i mean wealth or okay our status or our ego that will not work out you know when we are politely speaking to a person that will work out you know i have many experience in my life you know i don't have that much knowledge but when i speak to a person god will work in their life when i have seen many times in my life that god is working in a person only be- not because of my knowledge or only not because of my i mean education or not because of my wealth or status or ego something but only because of the spirit of the lord was speaking to that person when we need the wisdom of god we need the wisdom of god when we speak to a person when we utter a, utter a word from our mouth I mean, that's the reason that god has given this mouth to us I mean for uh, let me give you one example uh, from our ministry life you know when we were uh, ministering in bangalore in karnataka villages you know uh, we took a charge of a church in there uh, in 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 karnataka area and um, uh, when 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 i took the charge of the church you know the first sunday uh, the 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 receiving sunday was that the first sunday after right after the service one family came to me and uh, uh, said uh, 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 pastor you have to come to our church this week and uh, we have some we have some problem in our, in our family uh, between husband and wife you know i'm i'm just encouraging you you know he, they, that that family came to me but we did not know canada they are speaking in kannada there is a kannada church also in that church and uh, there is an, uh, there, there was no other pastor the pastor uh, before me he was knowing kannada very well and he was ministering unto these people but i was knowing not knowing kannada a, a single word and i i was just listening what that family was saying and i was just listening and i said okay okay we'll come there we'll come there this week then we went there i mean uh, praise and i we went there to that house and uh, uh, we started to talk to them and they started to i mean uh, give all the problems of their life and their family problems and everything they are speaking to us and we are not understanding all those things but we can we know because i know uh, uh, tamil that's the reason so i can i can understand what they are speaking then i prayed oh lord i don't know kannada i don't know how to speak to these people but i know that i mean you will give me wisdom i don't know what i spoke i spoke something to those people and we just came out of that house and uh, we, uh, i mean uh, came to a house and we were we both were thinking is that our problem solved or what <laughs> because we don't know kannada and in the video we did not know what uh, what is their problem also really and i said i don't know god will do something god will do something then we came to know that, that the problem was solved when they came to the church next week and they were testifying that pastor came to our house he spoke to us and the problem was solved really let me tell you you know that uh, i mean that husband and wife they were quarreling they were making fighting each other when we were standing there when we were standing there in the house they were fighting each other and i was not knowing anything but they testified that pastor and family came to our house and they spoke to us and they prayed and god did the miracle and our problem is solved they started to come to the church regularly next week onwards why i am sharing this 
Why I'm sharing this? I mean, nothing. I mean, whatever we have, that will not work out for the people. But when you have the wisdom of God, when you have the presence of God, when you have the spirit of the Holy, Holy Spirit and presence of the Holy Spirit, I mean, many things will happen and God will tell you, I mean, what to speak from your mouth. I mean, so God will use your mouth to bless other people. Okay, and even though there is a, there is a, there is a, even though there is a, I mean, war or there is a conflict, when I mean, God will speak to you and God will give you the right answer, I mean, right reply for to to give to the people in the right time. I mean, that I have experienced, and you can also experience in your life. I mean, whatever the problem that you are going through, I mean, Hallelujah, I mean, whatever you are speaking, let it be according to the will of God and for the good purpose. Hallelujah. And again, the second portion, the second point is, I mean, our words can restore the sinners. Our words can restore the sinners. Okay. So the first point is, our words can bring, uh, uh, okay, uh, make peace, make peace unto the people instead of, instead of war. Okay, instead of conflict. But, and the second point is, our words can restore the sinners. Read uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> Amen. What is that? You know, in, if, if anyone is fallen or mistaken, our words can restore that person, right? You know, there will be some people, there will be some people in our churches also. You know, they are not able to attend or they are not able to, I mean, uh, come spiritually, I mean, much. And they need to have, they, they, they wish to do that, but they are not able to do that. Okay, there will be some people doing sin. There will be some people falling away from the presence of God. But what is our responsibility? You know, Bible very clearly says that when you speak to those people, the fallen people, the mistaken people, man, your words can restore that person. But how to speak? Speak in a spirit of gentleness and meekness. Okay? Speak in a, in a spirit of gentleness and meekness. And if you are speaking to that person, man, that person will come back to Christ. That person will come back to the presence of God only because you are speaking to that person very meek okay? and, and gently. Okay, so when you speak in that way, that person will come to the Christ. I mean, again, even it's, it's true that he is mistaken. It's true that he is fallen. It's true that he is going away from the presence of God. Talk to that person. Talk to that person. I mean, regularly talk to this person. I mean, with a, with a meek mind and with a gentle mind. And that person will come back to Christ again. Hallelujah. And especially it is written there. But when you do that, look yourself so that you too will not be Tempted. So, how do you marry with a man? Well, the Tilla Magapet to Boyingil, Atmi Garay, Ningalangani, will have a Saumi, the Atma will the Dastana Pertuin, Nium, Pariche, Lagapada, the Rikivan, So, we have to think about, you know, when we speak to a person about the word of God or something which is good for them, the same time, think about ourselves that you also have a chance to engage in the temptation. Okay. You can also be a part of the temptation, but you have to be keeping your life perfectly in front of that person and telling them very meek and very gently speaking to that person, that person will come back. You know, in Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 to 20, Jesus is explaining the procedure of restoring a sinner, brother or sister back to Christ. Then Genesis, I mean Matthew chapter 18 verses 15 and 20. So we have no time to read all those portions. But let me let me tell you one thing that it says that you know when a person, when a brother or sister is falling away from the presence of God, when a when a brother or sister is uh, I mean uh, uh, fallen or he is doing sin, first of all talk to him personally very politely. First of all talk to the to him. Very politely, if he is refusing that word, go with one or two more. Okay, so first of all, speak to that person per privately or personally. And if he is refusing that, then go with one or two more people. And if he is refusing that word also, involve the church. Involve the church and church can speak to that person. Otherwise, if he is refusing the word of a church, man, let him be a Gentile or a tax collector 
for you which means which means you know if he is not loving or if he is not i mean what is that uh, 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 agreeing with that word of a church or a pastor or the elders or or the or the church members okay elderly people whatever it may be that person will be counted as a gentile or tax collector but i personally believe that i will not call i will not count any person those who are falling away from the presence of god as a gentile or a tax collector or a sinner but i am trying or we are trying to bring those people into christ again regularly i mean so you know when we are uh, taking the uh, what is that the new membership class we used to say that okay uh, if something is happening uh, uh, differently or is if some people are i mean acting uh, in, in in a bad way then uh, we will talk to you but if you are not uh, receiving that if you are not uh, uh, if you are re refusing that then we will have to put you out of the church okay that means as communic uh, what is that ex is communicating or explorership okay so we but we don't want to do that okay the pastors and elders we, are, we don't want to do that okay so that will not happen in our church so in my life in my ministry i never do anything to a person in my in my in my ministry now, to any person oraale polum porthaakanda avashyam എനിക്ക് ദൈവം തന്നിട്ടില്ല എൻ്റെ ആവശ്യം വന്നിട്ടില്ല ഇരുപത്തഞ്ച് വർഷമായി കർത്താവിൻ്റെ വേലയിലായിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരാളെ പോലും ചർച്ച ചെയ്ത് പുറത്താക്കിയിട്ടില്ല കുറെ പേരെ കൂട്ടിയിട്ടേ ഉള്ളൂ സോ അവർ റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ഈസ് നോട്ട് ടു പുട്ട് എ പേഴ്സൺ എവേ ഫ്രം അ ചർച്ച് ഓർ ഐ മീൻ പുട്ടിങ് എവേ ഓർ ഐ മീൻ എ കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കേറ്റിംഗ് എ പേഴ്സൺ ഫ്രം ദ ചർച്ച് ബട്ട് വി ആർ ഐ മീൻ ഐ മീൻ വി ആർ ജസ്റ്റ് ഐ മീൻ ഐ മീൻ ആഡിങ് മോർ പീപ്പിൾ ആഡിങ് മോർ പീപ്പിൾ കോളിങ് മോർ പീപ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് സ്പീക്കിംഗ് ടു പീപ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് വി ആർ ട്രൈങ് ടു ഐ മീൻ അറേഞ്ച് എവ്രിബഡി ടുഗെദർ ആൻഡ് യുണൈറ്റഡ്ലി ഐ മീൻ വി ആർ I mean, I mean, working for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us take a decision that uh, when God has given us an organ, right? God has given us the parts of our body, especially we were talking about the mouth. Okay? We were talking about our speech. We were talking about our words. And we were talking about our lips or tongues. When God has given this blessing as a gift, the mouth as a gift of God. I mean, it's an, it's an awesome gift of God. I mean, so let us use that for a peaceful life. atmosphere instead of the war let us use that mouth or tongue for bringing many people into christ i mean uh, instead of i mean i mean i mean uh, i mean uh, uh, sending away the people but getting more people i mean adding more people into the church and let our words be a blessing for other people hallelujah shall we close our eyes in the presence of god and let us pray together hallelujah father we thank you father we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord hallelujah god is giving that uh, i mean that uh, i mean word towards the people those who are sitting here that I mean let your word be a blessing for other people let your word be a blessing for other people let your word I and mean, bring peace into the into the lives of the people hallelujah i mean if there, there there are some problems in the families if there are some problems in our church if there are problems in our society when you and me going out and when you are going i mean speaking to those people let the let the peace of god let the blessing of god i mean come out i mean from our mouth and let the people be blessed by your word people be blessed by your speech people be blessed by your tongue hallelujah so let us understand what is the I mean, dangerous things uh, which is happening with our tongue but i mean god has given us the organ god has given us the i mean mouth and god has given us the parts of our body to 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 praise the name of the lord and to be i mean useful in the hands of god let us pray together